Hello once again and welcome back to the video lectures for the geodynamics course. This set of video lectures, this is the first of the lecture 5 series about the basics of elasticity and elastic deformation of the lithosphere. In this first lecture we're basically just going to do a preview of how uh, elasticity applies to the lithosphere and give you a little idea of kind of where we're headed. There are two goals in the lecture. First is to kind of preview our path. So this is our first step in our way to talking about the rheology of the Earth. And in the lecture, as I've said, we're just going to see a couple examples of ways in which the lithosphere is elastic. So at this point, we've talked about stress and we've talked about strain and we've seen measurements of stress and strain in rocks. For the rest of this lecture and for a few other lectures that are coming up, uh, not immediately after this one, but later in the course, our focus is going to be on the connections between stress and strain. And this relationship or these relationships between stress and strain or strain rate are called constitutive relationships and are represented by constitutive equations that basically tell us how rocks will deform or be strained as a result of an applied force or stress. And sometimes these are also referred to as rheological laws. Today we're going to start with uh, what's arguably the simplest, and that is elasticity. Now, rocks, basically all rocks can be elastic in the right conditions. And for rock to behave as an elastic material, you're basically talking about relatively low temperatures and relatively low deviatoric stresses. So if the deviatoric stress is increased and the temperature stays relatively low, rock will tend to fracture or behave in a brittle manner. And this will be the focus of the lecture set 11. If temperature is increased significantly, then rocks will cross over into the viscous deformation field, in which case they begin to flow, and that will be what we talk about in lecture 12. And actually, there'll be a couple lectures before that that kind of already give us a little bit of um, the background we need to talk about viscous flow of rock. Okay, so as I mentioned, we're going to look at some now, um, some examples of elastic deformation of the lithosphere, and we're going to start by looking at foreland basins. And so these are sedimentary basins that form proximal to mountain ranges um, that are the result basically of downward flexure of the lithosphere as a result of the mountain range being uplifted and thrust upon the um, lithosphere beneath it. The examples we're going to look at are from the Beartooth Mountains on um, the upper cross section or to, in the northern part of the map and the Wind River Mountains in the lower cross section or down here in the southern part of the map. These are two mountain ranges in the western United States, part of the Rocky Mountains and uh, were uplifted about uh, maybe 70 to 50 million years ago, kind of the last gasp of the construction of the Rocky Mountains. In both cases what we're looking at is uplift of a mountain range along a relatively steep fault that actually cuts all the way down into the basement. And so the rock that's exposed at the surface uh, in the Beartooth and Wind River Mountains is Precambrian basement rock. And um, when these thrust faults are active and you're uplifting these mountains, basically you can think about this as putting a load onto the lithosphere. So I'll take my favorite representation of an elastic uh, lithosphere, and that is a nice plastic ruler. And if I hold on to one end of it, you can think about the uplift of a mountain range as basically putting a load onto the end of the ruler. And when I do that, as you can hopefully see, the ruler flexes downward. The lithosphere is doing the same thing in this case. In the Beartooth Mountains are uplifted. It puts a load on the end of the, the lithosphere next to the fault, flexes that other uh, side of the lithosphere in the foot wall of the fault downward and makes room for the deposition of sediment that occurs um, proximal to the, um, to the mountain range. So that's basically what's going on 
uh, here in both of these cross sections you can see a similar geometry for the Wind River Mountains and then over on the right side we have some models of flexure of the lithosphere and I'm not going to talk about this in any detail right now because we'll get into flexure of the lithosphere in the next set of lectures. Now here we have another example of flexure in uh, and basically beneath the volcanic islands that form Hawaii and these islands as we know are uh, thought to be the result of hotspot volcanism in the Pacific Plate and the island chain is shown in map view here on the left side and this is just a kind of cartoon cross-section view through one of the volcanic islands in Hawaii on the right. What you can see is a relatively um, big piece of volcanic material that has been piled up on top of the lithosphere and the lithosphere is, is flexing down beneath it. Again, if I take the ruler, this one's a little bit harder for me to do, but if I try to hold the ends of the, of the ruler and apply a load in the middle, you can see basically that the ruler is flexing downward and that's kind of what we think is going on beneath the volcanic islands in Hawaii, that we have this load of the island on top of the lithosphere that's leading it to flex downward. Our last example is one that we've actually already seen and that it comes from the San Andreas Fault in the state of California, northern part of Mexico in western North America. Now as you'll recall, when we looked at deformation of the San Andreas Fault from uh, GPS data, we observed that the deformation was distributed over an area about 100 kilometers wide on um, you know, 50 kilometers or so on either side of the San Andreas, where we saw broad uh, bending of or broad changes in the velocities on either side of the fault. We can simulate this again with a ruler. If I hold on to the two sides of the ruler and I move my hands with respect to one another, you can see that the ruler flexes in a way that's very similar to what we think is going on in the San Andreas Fault. So in this case, you know, we're looking down, the San Andreas Fault would be running through the middle of the ruler, we're looking down at this like it's a map view, and you can see the pattern of flexure looks actually a lot like the velocity pattern that's observed from the GPS data. Okay, so that was our preview of what's coming up. The reason that I'm doing a preview here is because the next couple lectures are going to be mostly about the equations of elasticity and it's not actually until the next lecture set that we're really going to get into some of the equations of flexure of the lithosphere. Anyway, now it's the time to take the quiz as usual. So go ahead, take your quiz, and I'll see you for the next one.